Two days ago, I did something that I had no intention of doing when I woke up that morning, which is I came out to my mother as asexual at lunch. Um, so the day started when I needed to go to the bank and my mom needed to run some errands, so we got in the car and did all that, and then we went out to lunch, and we went to lunch at... it doesn't matter. Um, the point is, while we were there, we started talking about my freshman year of college, because I have been home for about a month, and that conversation led into the friends that I've made at college, and that led into a conversation about the friends that I had in high school, because I moved since high school, and I haven't really kept in contact with many of them really at all. Um, and then that led into a conversation about forming relationships. And I got really nervous because I was thinking, oh my god, where is this conversation going to go? What's going to happen? What am I going to say? I'm going to sound stupid because things are just going to kind of fall out of my head. And I was right, but we're not at that point yet. Um, so we were talking about the friends that I had in high school. Because she knew that I had friends in high school. Um, but she didn't know if I had any best friends because I didn't really talk about any one person more than anyone else. Um, and so she asked me if I had problems forming relationships. And to that I kind of said yes. Hold on, my computer's crashing. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. Um, and to that I said yes, I kind of do have problems forming relationships. And that led on to a little uh, conversation about uh, sociopathy. And then she started talking about like romantic relationships and how my sisters had occasionally asked her, you know, does he have a girlfriend? Does he have a boyfriend? They seemed a little excited about that. Um, and I knew in that moment that I was either going to, one, have to lie and say, yes, I did. Or I'd have to lie and say, no, I'm still looking. Or I would tell the truth and say, you know what, I'm actually, I'm asexual. And then I knew that there would be a long conversation about that. Um, but she was still talking, trying to finish out her thought and her sentence. And as soon as she finished, um, I looked down at the chips on the table, and I was going to reach for one, and I picked it up, and I dipped it in the cheese sauce, and as I was doing this, I realized that I was talking, and that I was telling her that I was asexual. And I was... I... I don't remember... Uh, m wanting the words to come out of my mouth, or making them come out of my mouth, they just sort of did as I was reaching for a chip. And then I looked up at her, and I don't know if what I saw in her face, but she smiled, and then she said what, you know, I was hoping that she would say, you know, as long as you're happy. Um, which I wasn't sure if I was at that moment. Because um, I knew, I well, I think I knew. No, I didn't. I thought that maybe at some point this summer I would come out to my family, um, but I also knew that there was a very high chance that I wouldn't until, well, if ever, later in life. Um, but as I was sitting there eating my chips and whatnot, um, I came out to my mother, and I don't really know if I meant to. But I did. Um, but I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about my experience with asexuality as a thing. Because that, that's really the whole of my story. There wasn't as long of a conversation about it as I thought there was. We just sort of moved on to the next topic of conversation, which I was thankful for. Um, but I'll talk about my, my personal experience with asexuality. Um, because it's weird and it's scary, especially, you know, seven or eight years ago when I started to realize, 
well, I'll get into that, like, in a second. Um, because I realized it in middle school. You know, when hormones are raging, and the halls smell like body odor, and people start dating. And I had no interest in dating. I had no interest in trying to find a relationship with anyone. And, you know, that kind of raised some eyebrows in middle school, because it's like, ooh, you know, he's not, he's not going for a girl, he must be gay, because back eight years ago, how uh, it might have been seven years, I don't know, uh, seventh grade, you know, okay, I'm going to do math, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven or eight years ago, um, you know, gay was still a weird thing, you were still kind of not fully accepted by your peers, partially because they're idiots, partially because a lot has changed in the last seven or eight years. Um, and people, well, because they kept saying that, like, because, you know, middle schoolers have no sense of, uh, sugarcoating anything, they just flat out say, yo, are you gay? And like, no. But then, as time went on, as I went months and then a year without having any sexual attraction to females, I started to think, well, maybe I am. You know, maybe, maybe I am gay. So, I considered it, and I was afraid of it because, you know, what are my parents going to say when I tell them? Am I going to tell them Will I, what's going to happen? What is the future going to hold? Um, but after some time I realized, you know, no, I'm not attracted to boys either, so what's going on, you know? And I remember I had this thought for the first time back in eighth grade, um, you know, what's wrong with me? And, you know, being a 12-year-old in eighth grade, Knowing that, well, thinking that something is wrong with you isn't very pleasant, you know, because you don't even understand yourself and you know that you're missing an essential part of what it means to be human. Because, you know, in biology class, they teach you that there's four F's for living things, feeding, fighting, fleeing, and procreation. And they teach you that a living specimen has to fulfill these ten attributes, and one of them is, um, reproduction, and knowing that you have no interest in that, but not fully understanding the biology, um, you start to think, well, am I even alive? Which obviously you are, but do you count? Like, I remember thinking, I had all these thoughts, I, um, what is wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me? Uh, you know, uh, there was a whole bunch more, but I can't remember them off the top of my head because I tried to block them out. Um, because I just felt so invalid because of, you know, who I was and what I did and did not feel. Um, and that's sort of when I started to become less social, both in my social life and in my home life. Um, I didn't really talk about what happened at school, and I didn't talk about friends. I definitely didn't talk about relationships because I didn't have any. Um, and, you know, my parents, I don't know if they started to get suspicious or something, but I know that when I was younger, I was always a very talkative, very outgoing person, and I still am. I just had you know, six or seven years of my life where I wasn't. And I wasn't because I didn't know really, like, myself. And it's really, it's a really weird thing to talk about because when you're still, um, Asexuality is weird. Because, you know, at least when you're straight, you're straight, you know? 
I'm a boy, I like girls. Great. When you're gay, it's a little bit more complicated because I'm a boy, I like boys, and society still hasn't fully caught up with the concept that that's okay. Um, but asexuality is one of those things that you can't really explain to someone unless they experience it too. Um, because you're not telling them, oh, I'm attracted to boys. You're telling them, I'm not attracted sexually to anyone. And you can sort of imagine how hard it is to understand that. You're telling someone, essentially, that you don't feel a normal chemical balance in the brain that a lot of people feel. Because, you know, there was that statistic that went around, it was totally false, but back in middle school, um, boys think about sex every seven seconds, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, yeah, no, I haven't thought about that since that day in gym class where they broke us up into groups and told us about sex. And it's, like I said, it felt so invalidating. Like, I wasn't a human being because I wasn't feeling this essential normacy. Um, and then, when I was a junior in high school, yeah, it was a junior, um, I was laying on the floor of my bedroom, as I did very frequently, um, just thinking about the world and how it worked, and all that stuff, why it was so unfair to everyone, and why people were stupid, and, um, and my brain sort of wandered over to my sexuality. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I just burped. Um, and I started to think about the word stems of it, because I was on the verge of falling asleep, and that was where my brain was going, and I my dog is running around upstairs. Okay. Um, I started to think about the word stems of it. And, you know, heterosexual means attracted sexually to the opposite gender. Hetero meaning other. Um, homosexuality attracted to the same gender. Bi, both, pan, all. And so I started to think, well, you know what, then maybe... Maybe there's an asexual where A stands for not. And so I woke myself up from my weird half lucid dream state, pulled out my phone and looked up asexual and I learned that I was right. And as I read about it, I realized, yeah, okay, so this is real and I'm not as invalid as I thought. And so that was a great day, you know, sitting there realizing that, okay, this isn't normal, but it isn't abnormal. You know, there's other people, obviously, who experience this. I'm not the only one. And that's great. Because I did, I, I read a lot, and I currently do still read a lot. Um, but in many books, there's a heterosexual couple, you know. And occasionally, you'll come across a homosexual couple. But very rarely, and actually in no book that I've ever read, has there ever been an asexual person. And, you know, getting most of my experience with other humans from these books, it's the same sort of thing as watching TV and seeing no gay couples on TV and feeling like an outcast because you're gay. But a little bit weirder because... Literally no book that I've ever read has there ever been an asexual person. But I'm sort of digressing. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with this at this point. Um, but when I was a junior in high school, I realized that asexuality was a thing, and I started to feel more comfortable with it. Um, my senior year of high school was a lot better because I kind of understood, you know, myself, and I wasn't nearly as upset about being a human as I had been. And then I went to college for my freshman year, 
and within the first week I met two demisexual people and another asexual person and you know we kind of bonded over that fact because we were suddenly oh my god there's another one this is so exciting and you know we're all friends and it's great and it's nice to be around people who are similar to you in that sense so that you don't feel like an island in the middle of the ocean all by yourself. Um, so college is very helpful. If you're in high school and you're struggling to get through college, or struggling to get to college, just hold on, because it gets so much better. Um, I don't know why I put that in. I'm, whatever. I'm doing this in one take. I'm not going to delete any of it. Um, but that was really all the talking points that I had. My story was kind of short. I still don't know. I haven't told the rest of my family. I don't know if my mom has, and that's kind of, you know, scary as well, because, you know, do they know, and are they pretending that they don't? Um, how long before she tells them? Will she tell them? Will she wait for me to tell them? How long do I have before I tell them? Will I tell them within the next, you know, little while? Will I just send them this video? Um, but yeah, that was my story. That was my experience with it. I'm asexual, and I've come to terms with it, which is great. I came to terms with it a little while ago. And the washing machine is done. Um, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's ringing in the back. Um, I came to terms with it, and I'm okay with it. But saying it out loud to my mother was kind of a scary thing that I didn't really intend to do, but I did. And now that that's done, I feel like there should be a weight off my shoulders, but at the moment there still isn't. Um, I think it'll just gradually lift, and once I tell my father and my sisters and, you know, my aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents, then it'll, it'll be fine. Because, you know, my friends all know, well, my friends from college, you know, um, yeah. I guess that's where I'm going to leave it. I don't have anything else to say. So, thank you for watching and sticking through to the end, if you did. Um, yeah. Thanks. Bye.